This is how the German Atrix came to be. Several hundred years ago, some adepts met in secret in an upstairs room above a bazaar in Morocco. They were fearful for their lives and worried how to preserve their wisdom. Certain parties were hell-bent, almost literally, at keeping the wisdom of ages from the populace. If people knew how to be free, the powers that be would have no place in the world. The adepts spoke in many different tongues, but shared a common vision. Their mission was to share their knowledge with humanity, but they were about a thousand years too early to share it, as it could be dangerous if it fell into the wrong hands. Humanity would have to go through a period of endarkenment before seeing the true light. The result of this separation from the light had a positive and intentional byproduct. Humans were forced to gain mastery over the physical plane. Our modern day world is a testament to what this implied. The adepts had another hurdle to overcome. Not only did they speak different languages, but many of the concepts that they wanted to share did not have words yet created that described them. They were beyond words, and as such, beyond normal self-expression and awareness. The adepts had to encode their wisdom pictorially in a set of cards called the tarot. The deck was divided into two parts. The major arcana contained the blueprint for the consciousness of humans. The minor arcana described their true nature as nine-dimensional spirits who chose to incarnate in a three-dimensional reality with a forward arrow of time. The elders call this the illusion. The tarot deck was shared with the Romanis. They spread it around the globe and used it for fortune telling and divination. As the deck was magical, it could be used to open the veil to peer through the illusion. Outside the illusion there is no time, so the future is as clear as the past. This application of the deck was trivial compared with the deck's real power, but it helped mask its true purpose. Its security was ensured by its obscurity. The keys were plain for all to see if they only looked. In the early 21st century, a reincarnated adept wrote two books which revealed some of the true potential for the major and minor arcana. Even these books, Flavors of Thought and Planes of Being, are somewhat inexplicit about the true magic contained in the whole deck. They do, though, give pointers for further research for those that are so minded. In Flavors of Thought, the true nature of each key of the major arcana is revealed. They each represent a mode of consciousness. When combined together, they form spells called recipes for fresh thinking. These flavors and recipes found their way to a talented and magical artist in Greece. She is also one of the original adepts. The flavors of thought inspired her to create 22 new images, one for each key or flavor. Her images then sparked 22 allegorical stories to pop into the mind of her fellow adept from the collective. The tarot is like a baton that is passed from person to person and from age to age. Like the tarot itself, the stories in the Germanatrix are as old as the hills, if not a little older. The images might be different and the words might appear in new languages, but the message is the same. The message is simply to illuminate and to encourage others to carry the baton still further. Now is the awakening time. The Germanatrix and other tall tales is now available from Amazon, illustrated by Paula Svensson and written by me, Tom Evans. Get your copy today if you'd like to change your life and your world.